Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's solve rational equations. And uh, we're going to learn two different methods for solving rational equations. And this first method is the cross-multiplying method. Uh, so you can see I have a rational equation there. And the reason this is not a rational expression is there's an equal sign. The equal sign makes it an equation. If I was just simplifying a rational expression, you could just say, okay, well, I have this rational expression, just ignore the equal sign and, and everything on the left. But if I just had that and I wanted to simplify a rational expression, then that's fine. We would factor across stuff out. But in this case, I actually have an equal sign, so I can actually figure out what x is going to be here. Step number one, are there two fractions separated by an equal sign? The answer here is yes. I have one fraction and another fraction with an equal sign between them. So if I do, if I have two fractions separated by an equal sign, I can use the else or the uh, uh, cross multiplying method. If not, I have to use the other method, which is the LCD method. All right. So the answer here is yes. Go to step two. Step two: cross multiply and solve. So I'm going to cross multiply. All right. So let's do three x times five equals, and then four times five x plus ten. Sorry, let me get that 5 in there. Okay, so I just basically have a regular old algebra equation now. So on the left-hand side, I have 15x equals distribute 20x plus 40. Uh, let's uh, subtract 20x from both sides. And I have on the left-hand side negative 5x equals positive 40 divided by negative 5. And x equals negative 8. Now, before I go on, I can check it. I would type in neg or uh, plug in negative 8 for x. And on both sides of the equation, um, so negative 8 times 3 is negative 24 divided by 4 is negative 6. And then negative 8 times 5 um, is negative 40, plus 10 is negative 30, divided by 5 is negative 6. So I get the same thing on both sides, that means it's my final answer. And the other thing we're going to have to check is to make sure that when I plug that in, it does not make either of these denominators equal to 0. Now, I don't have any x values in the denominator, so obviously that's not going to happen here. But I really need to check to make sure that my denominators do not turn to 0, because then the fraction becomes undefined. I'm good in this case, my answer is negative 8. Hi there, let's solve this rational equation. First step, do I have two fractions separated by an equal sign? The answer is yes. So I can go ahead and use the cross-multiplying method. So let's go ahead and cross-multiply. x times 40, 40x. Set that equal to the product that I get on the other side. So 25 times 16 is going to be 400. Uh, divide by 40, so I'm just going to solve for x here. So x equals 10. If I plug it in, 25 divided by 10 is 2.5. 40 divided by 16 is also 2.5. We get the same thing on both sides. So that is my final answer. And it does not make any of the denominators equal to 0. If I plug it in there, it just becomes 10, not 0. So 10 is my final answer. All right, there, let's solve the um, example 2 over x minus 4 equals x plus 5 over 5. First question when I'm solving a rational equation is it two equal sign or two fractions separated by an equal sign? The answer is yes. So I'm going to go ahead and use a cross multiplying method. So two times five is ten equals, and then I have x minus four times x plus five. Well, it looks like x minus four x plus five looks like I should foil that or distribute. So I'm going to distribute the x to both sides or to both terms and the negative four to both terms. <clears throat> so I end up with ten equals x squared plus 5x, so that's distributing the x. Now I'm going to distribute to negative 4, so negative 4x, negative 4 times 5, negative 20. Uh, so now I'm left with a quadratic equation. And from the last topic in this chapter, the uh, to solve a quadratic equation, the first thing I want to do is put it in the standard form. So I'm going to leave the x squared on the right-hand side. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. And I also have like terms here I can combine. So I'm going to kind of do it all at one time. So I end up with 0 equals x squared. Uh, 5x minus 4x is just x, 1x. And then negative 20 minus 10 is negative 30. Okay, so uh, it looks like I have a uh, three-term polynomial here. So I can 
try to factor it. Factoring for some of you is going to be the easiest way to do it because some of you are really good at factoring and it doesn't take very long. Um, so I can't do GCF, so I'm going to try something else. Let's try trial and error. So it looks like I can do 6 and 5, 10 and 3, or a 30 and 1. Um, and I can add and subtract 6 and 5 to get a positive 1. So let's do x plus 6 and x minus 5. And that all equals 0. So in order to solve it, these are my factors. So in order to find the solutions, I want to set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve them. All right, so I have x plus 6 equals 0. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. x equals negative 6. And then I have x minus 5 equals 0. Sub or add 5 to both sides, so x equals positive 5. So there's one of my answers, and there's one of my answers. And if you plug them both in, they will both work. Um, and I also need to check to make sure they don't make a denominator equal to 0. So there's x minus 4. So negative 6 minus 4 is not 0, 5 minus 4 is not 0, so it's a, those are both good solutions. Hi, we're going to solve this rational equation using the LCD method. Notice that this equation does not have two fractions separated by an equal sign. I actually have two fractions on the left-hand side of the equal sign, so I can't cross-multiply here. So I have to figure out something else to do, and we've done this before. Um, this will look a lot, or very familiar to you. Uh, the method that I'm doing here. I'm just going to add a little bit on to the end um, of what we have done in the past. All right, so step number one says factor each denominator. Now, in this case, I have a bunch of loners for the denominator, so I don't really need to factor it. I'm just going to kind of jump ahead to step number two, and I'm going to identify the LCD. All right, so whenever I had loners for the LCD, the first thing I looked for was I looked at each coefficient. So I have two, six, and three, and I looked for the um, smallest number that they all go into. And back then, we, um, whenever we simplified or added and subtracted rational expressions, we looked for uh, the smallest number they all go into, and we listed their multiples, you know, like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then I did the same thing for 6. So 6, 12, 18. Let me add 12 there. And then same thing for 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12. And the first number that I come to that's in all of the... Um, list there is 12. So my LCD is 12. Now I look at the um, variable and the highest exponent. I'm going to pick that off. So it's just x to the first. So it's just 12x. So my LCD is 12x. All right, so step number three, I want to get each denominator to look like the LCD. So again, my LCD was 12x. And I want to make each denominator look like that. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to see what I need to multiply each denominator by to make it look like 12x. So for 2x, I need to multiply that by um, 6. So if I do it to the bottom, then i got to do it to the top. Then 6x times 2, if I do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top. And then for 3, I need to multiply that by 4x. Alright, so at this point, I now have um, 6 over 12x minus 4 over 12x equals 4x over 12x. Now, that step, what I just did, I rewrote everything. You're probably not going not gonna to do that when you normally do these problems. I'm just, I just want to show you what I'm going to do here in step 4. That's why I rewrote that. All right, so step number four says wipe out the LCD. So this is kind of the magic step, even though it's not really magic, it's math. Um, but it's going to look like magic. I'm allowed to do anything I want to a, an equation as long as I do it to everything in the equation. So in this case, notice how all the denominators are the same. They're all 12x. So what I can do is I can say, all right, I want to multiply all three of these fractions by 12x over 1. So if I multiply them all by 12x... I can now go 12x over 12x is 1. I can get rid of them. 12x over 12x is 1. 12x over 12x is 1. And all I'm left with then is 6 minus 4 equals 4x. Okay, so what I did there seemed like I did some crazy stunt, but it's really not. Um, I just multiplied everything by whatever the LCD was, so I could just cross them all out. So now I'm just left with the numerators. 
So step five is just solve the equation. So six minus four equals four x. So six minus four is two. Um, so two equals four x. And then just divide by four. So x equals one half. Now I have to check for any answers that make any denominator equal to zero. So I want to plug these in everywhere I see an x into the equation. And it should make the equation work. I'm going to save a little time and not do that. But I do want to check to make sure the denominators don't equal zero. Two times a half is one, not zero. Six times a half is three, not zero. So I'm good there. Three is not zero. And I'm not even plugging an x in there. So I'm good on that one. So it looks like I'm good on step number six. So x equals one half is my final answer. If one half made a denominator equal to zero, I would have to get rid of it. I can't use it as my final answer. One time when my family was at the Flying Squirrels baseball game in Richmond, um, a flamingo, a guy dressed in a flamingo, came out and threw hot dogs into the crowd, and my son caught one. Um, it was not the best hot dog in the world, but he did catch it, and he was excited. Hi, so I'm going to solve this rational equation using the LCD method, again, because it's not two, two fractions separated by an equal sign. I actually have two fractions on one side, so I can't do cross-multiplying. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first step is uh, I'm going to find, well, first step is factor the denominators, but since they're all loners, I don't need to do that. So I'm going to go to step two, which is find the LCD. So I look at all my coefficients in my denominators. The only thing I see is a three, so that's just going to come down to the LCD. And then I pick off the highest exponent of the variable, which is just a 1, so it's 3x. All right, so now I want to make each denominator look like my LCD. So I need to multiply x by 3. So I have to do the same thing to the top. For 3, I need to multiply that by x. Do the same thing on top. I need a 3 over here and a 3 up there. All right, now at this step, I want to wipe out my LCD. So... On the notes, I actually made all the fractions, um, I kind of made it like 6 over 3x plus 5x over 3x. And I'm not going to do that anymore. So I'm just going to wipe out the LCD like that, and I'm just going to be left with the numerator. So I have 6 plus 5x equals 21. Now I just solved the equation. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So 5x equals 15 and divide by uh, 5, so x equals 3. Before I circle my answer, i got to make sure that it doesn't make any of the denominators equal to 0. So if I plug 3 in, x is 3, so that's good. That one's good, and that one's good. I'm good, so my final answer is x equals 3. Hi, I'm going to solve the rational equation below with the um, LCD method. Um, before I get started, I can see the 7 right there, and I want to actually throw that over 1. I want to make that into a fraction. All right, first step, I want to factor my denominators. Now, in this case, I'm dealing with groups. Well, I can't factor x minus 2, can't factor 1, can't factor x minus 2. So now I can jump into making my LCD. So I bring down my whole first denominator. Um, now I look for stuff that I haven't seen before. Well, there's a 1. That's, I can ignore that. And then I have an x minus 2. Well, I already have an x minus 2. All right, so now I can go ahead and make my denominators all the same. Um, so I have x minus 2 on the first denominator. Don't need anything. On the second denominator, I need an x minus 2. So I need an x minus 2 up top. And on the last denominator, don't need anything. All right, at this point, I can just wipe out the LCDs. So I can just go like this. Wipe them out. Now I'm just left with the numerators, so I have 5x equals, now I've got to distribute the 7x, or the 7, to the x minus 2, so that's 7x minus 14 plus 10. Now I just have an equation that I need to solve, so let's go ahead and subtract 7x. So I have negative 2x equals, negative 14 plus 10 is negative 4. Um, so now divide by negative 2, x equals... Uh, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. Before I circle it, I need to make sure that that doesn't make any of the denominators equal to 0. All right, so 2 minus 2. Uh-oh. So that doesn't work. That actually makes the denominator equal to 0. 
All right, so since that denominator is equal to zero and I can't divide by zero, that's undefined, that means this is not a good answer. So my solution here is no solution. There is no answer that I can plug in there that would make that equation work. Hi, so I'm going to solve this using the LCD method. All right, step number one, I want to factor the denominators. All right, well, the first denominator I can't factor, so I'll just leave it as x plus 1. Second denominator, I can factor that. That's x plus 1, uh, x minus 1. That's um, difference 2 squares. And then I also have 2 over 1. Can't do anything with that denominator. All right, next step, I want to make my LCD. So I'm going to bring down the whole first denominator, x plus 1. All right, now I want to bring down anything else I haven't seen before. Well, I saw an x plus 1 already, so I don't need to bring that down. But I do need to bring down an x minus 1 because I haven't seen that. Um, and then the 1 on the last fraction, I can ignore that. All right, so there's my LCD. So now I need to make each denominator look like my LCD. So I need an x minus 1 on that fraction. If I do it to the bottom, i got to do it to the top. I don't need anything um, on the second fraction. On the last fraction, I need them both. Okay, now at this point, I can go ahead and get rid of the denominators. All right, so now I'm just left with the numerator. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute as I do this. So 3x squared minus 3x. Okay, I just distributed to 3x equals 12. All right, so now I have to deal with this, um, this whole thing up here. So x plus 1 times x minus 1. I want to FOIL that first. Well, I know if I FOIL that, I'm going to get x squared minus 1. It's kind of the reverse of factoring using difference 2 squares. So now I want to distribute my 2. So that's plus 2x squared um, minus 2. Okay, so now I have a quadratic equation. I need to write it in standard form and then see if I can solve it. So I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. So I have x squared minus 3x equals 12 minus 2 is 10. So I want to subtract 10 from both sides. So x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. I'm going to try and solve this by factoring. So I have x minus 5, x plus 2. Those are my factors. I want to find my solutions now. So I set each of my factors equal to 0. So I'm left with uh, solutions of 5 and negative 2. So if I plug those back into the original problem, I shouldn't end up with a denominator of 0. 5 plus 1 is not 0. Negative 2 plus 1 is not 0. I'm good on this denominator. 5 squared minus 1, not 0. Negative 2 squared minus 1, not 0. So I'm good. And I'm also good on the last one. So that means both of these answers are my final answer. <clears throat> So I actually have two answers here, 5 and negative 2.